Okay, I think we are live. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me know if you can. Let me know if you can see me, hear me. Okay. Oh, I've got some got some got some feedback there. Um, okay, let's try again. Hello, I think we're alive. Can anybody? <laughs> Can anybody hear me, see me? Yes, I'm starting to see people. It's working now. Wonderful. Let me just look at your... Yes, hello. Brilliant. It's working. A miracle has happened. This is called the miracle of slowing down, but there's also the miracle of... The miracle of slowing down, actually broadcasting, and everyone being here, and me being here. So it's all working. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, to this webinar, the miracle. What's it called? The miracle of slowing down, meeting our noisy minds and tired bodies with kindness and compassion. And kindness and compassion being probably the most important words in that title. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. I've I've been kind of blown away with how many how many people have signed up. I think it's on the last count. It was nearly seven thousand people signed up for this for this uh, this this session. Um, we, we've only we've got a maximum i think of a thousand people in the in the zoom room um but we are i think we're also streaming on youtube if that if that's working then it <laughs> then it really will be a miracle <laughs> it'll be a double miracle um so yeah in case you can't get into the zoom room um you can watch this live on youtube um so we'll we'll get we'll get started in about a minute or so um just use this time to get really comfortable wherever you are. Um, this next hour is really for you. It's it's a chance for all of us to to slow down, to be present, to 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 bring our attention into the present moment, to to reconnect with ourselves, um, whatever is happening in our lives. So just get really comfortable if you need to um shut a window or shut a door if you if you want to put your phone off or put it on silent if you need to put a a pet move a pet i literally just had to move um our cat uh our lovely blind cat shadow she may she may pop in a bit later as a special guest we'll we'll be talking to her about the miracle of slowing down she's kind of an expert so yeah whatever you need to do to just get really comfortable um this this hour is is a sanctuary um Lots of things are appearing on my screen. This is all very strange. Confirm your speaking language. I think I'm speaking English. It's very strange. Um, yeah, feel free to just pop in the chat box and let me know where you're... Oh, you're already doing that, where you're calling in from. Wow, so many people. Oh, my goodness. Welcome, all of you. Um, good, you can you can hear me. That's wonderful. Friends from Canada, Ireland... Um, Friends from the UK, wow, Germany, Scotland, Netherlands, Wales, Brazil, South Africa, hello. Um, obviously not all of South Africa is tuning in, a few people from South Africa. Uh, <laughs> hello from Greece, wow. Isn't technology amazing when it works? Spain, Finland, hello, Yaka from Finland. Friends from Mexico, Toronto. Wow, I can't even keep up. India. Hello, Kajal. It's a lovely name from India. Very wet in Scotland. Hello from Italy, Denmark. Wow, incredible. I can't even, I can't even, uh, I've never seen so many messages on my phone before. Jeez, so many people. Sweden, amazing. Belgium, Czech Republic, hello. More friends from Mexico, Sweden. Okay, we could do this for the next hour, um, and maybe we will one day. So let's get going. I'm just gonna um, turn the chat off for a moment, um, so it doesn't it doesn't distract me too much. Um, yeah, let's get going. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. And uh, yeah, before I begin, thank you so much for all your um questions and, and comments and feedback on my new um my new online course called the alchemy of surrender which is starting in a week's time it's starting next wednesday on the 17th 
um, just to let you know that yes, you um, yes, there are still places available. Um, if you want to go on a, a six week journey with me, we're, we're going to be diving into surrender, diving into meditation, into the true meaning of what it really means to trust our experience. Uh, even when our experience is is painful, even when we feel overwhelmed and exhausted and lost, what it really means to surrender, what it really means to trust. We're going to be exploring all of that together. Um, yeah, it's a six-week course. There's still places available um, starting on the 17th. Uh, I, I think I think maybe the, the link is somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the chat box, or maybe you've been emailed about it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that that's 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 happening and yeah thank you for all your questions and and feedback about that um i'm very much looking forward to it anyway welcome to this session um yeah the miracle of slowing down i'm kind of amazed that so many people would be interested honestly in a in a a session called the miracle of slowing down you know in this session um I'm not really offering you very much, you know, in, in terms of stuff, lots of stuff to learn. This session is more about, well, really what, what it says on the tin, it's about slowing down. It's about being present. And, you know, so many people that I've met over the years tell me that it's, it's, it's the hardest thing sometimes, isn't it? To, to slow down. It's the, it feels like the hardest thing in the world sometimes, just, just to be present, to be still, just to stop, even for a few moments, which is really the essence of meditation. And we're, we're going to be doing a, a short meditation together um, very, very shortly. Now, I was speaking to, to a friend um, a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me that, and I've heard, I've heard different versions of this story over the years. You know, he, he was saying that he just feels so exhausted and so frazzled by life and so overwhelmed, all the stuff happening in the world. And he finds, he just finds himself day in, day out, just being busy, 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 just doing, 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 doing. And he told me that, you know, he, he knows, he knows that Whenever in the past he's he's actually stopped and meditated, he's always always felt better. But he said, Jeff, like it's just, I don't know why I don't do it. it that, that that was his question to me. Is Jeff, why why is it so hard to slow down? I know in the back of my mind, I know that I should be doing it. I know that I need to do it. I know that I long to do it. There's a part of me, he said, that just longs to rest, and maybe that's what we all long for on the deepest level is, is rest, deep rest. But it was so interesting because he was saying how, he, like on one hand, he knows it's what he needs and what he wants and he longs for it. But on the other hand, he just, he just won't do it. He was like, why, why, why won't I do it? And, and maybe some of you can relate to this. Like it's, it's almost like there's a part of us that doesn't want to stop. It doesn't want to slow down. It doesn't want to rest. And may maybe that's because on some level we know that if if we really just stopped, if we really just rested, if we really slowed down just for a moment, just stop with all the unnecessarily the all the unnecessary behaviors, all the doing, 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 all the all the activities. On some level we we know that if we were to just stop we would have to face ourselves in that stillness in that presence we would have to face ourselves and maybe on some level that's what we're running away from right in so many ways with all our, our busyness and our addictions if if we truly stopped we would have to face ourselves and that can be really 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 uncomfortable and isn't that the voice of trauma this is one way of talking about trauma. Trauma is like that voice in us. And, and, and it says, look, ju just, just keep going. Just keep going. Don't stop. Just keep doing. Next thing, chase, go, activity, just, just distraction, addiction, anything, anything. Just keep going. Anything but slowing down. Anything but stopping. Because if you stop, there's the, there's the danger that you're going to have to feel 
what you've been running away from. You're going to have to face your your pain. You're going to have to face your um, your fear, your 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 guilt. A lot of people that I meet are running, 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 running away from guilt. You're going to have to face your your loneliness. You're going to have to face your exhaustion. So many people that I meet are running from their exhaustion. So what meditation, true meditation, invites us to do is is to take a step towards ourselves, to 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 lean, actually lean into our experience, to take that courageous step of taking no step, as I often say, to take that courageous step of taking no more steps away from ourselves. It can take a lot of courage to just stop and let ourselves experience what's there in that stopping. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's intense, even if it's painful, meditation invites us to, to stay with our experience. Meditation in, invites us to, to be here. Even if there's a part of us that wants to run away, there's, as, as, I, as I always say, there's, there's even room for that part of us in meditation. All of you, all of you is welcome in meditation. M meditation is like a, a, a deep ocean of loving acceptance that, that you just kind of drop into. Meditation has nothing to do with chasing states, chasing experiences, trying to meditate your way towards some higher level of consciousness. I think that those are all old ideas about what meditation is. It's all the mind's ideas of meditation. Meditation is much kinder, much simpler, much more accessible. Meditation is a a vast ocean of of acceptance and which an ocean which just um embraces you exactly as you are embraces you exactly as you are um in meditation we're not we're not trying to fix ourselves meditation's the opposite of that that's what becomes so exhausting i think always trying to fix yourself so you know and I, and I did this for so many years and and it was it was so exhausting in the end always trying to fix yourself always trying to mend yourself always trying to become something other than what you are always chasing chasing perfection chasing some other state you know we 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 become spiritual seekers and we start chasing altered states, we start chasing the highs, we start chasing higher levels of consciousness, and all that will become so exhausting as well, you know? So, I mean, so, as I said before, so many people that I meet all over the world, right, especially these days, they're just so, they're so exhausted. Bless them, bless our hearts, you know? And then the thing is, in in our exhausted state, it's like we don't even know what to do with that exhaustion. We We, we even run away from our exhaustion. And that becomes even more exhausting, trying not to be exhausted, trying not to be what you are in this moment. It's, it's, it's like the ultimate futility, right? We're exhausted, but we're running away from that. We're in denial of that. We're exhausted, but we're chasing something. We're, we, we feel lonely. We feel sad. We feel angry. We feel lost. We feel exhausted, but we're running, running, running. And where are we? Where are we trying to get to? So meditation invites us to let go of that that whole um, self improvement project, that whole game of chasing, that whole game of trying to become something else. Meditation invites us to just slow down, to just rest exactly where we are, to rest on this chair, to let ourselves do nothing, just for a moment. It's an experiment. Anyway, well, let's, um, let's move into a short meditation together. Um, this meditation is going to be really simple. Um, it doesn't matter if you've never meditated before. It doesn't matter if you're an expert meditator with a million meditation certificates. Um, we are all, truth be told, we are all absolute 
beginners when it comes to true meditation. Because none of us have experienced this present moment before, so there can't be any experts, right? Meditation's about diving into the this fresh new moment, diving into the unknown without expectations. So it, you, ultimately, there are there's no such thing as a meditation expert. We're all doing it for the first time. Um, yeah, so let's dive in together. Um, this is going to be a very simple, very gentle guided meditation, just about slowing down and uh, allowing ourselves to have our experience. You know, as we so rarely just allow ourselves, give ourselves permission to have our experience. We're often so busy unconsciously trying to have another experience, trying to have some higher experience, trying to have some better experience, trying to chase, addictively chase some future experience that we, we so very rarely just slow down and uh, allow ourselves to have our experience, to be present with our experience, even if it's uncomfortable. So there's no special position you have to be in, um, any position that feels comfortable for you. You may just like to sit, you, you don't have to, you may like to sit up straight, but I try and sit up straight in my chair. I don't often sit up straight. Sit up straight in your chair. You may like to just place your feet flat on the ground, just to feel the earth, really to feel the earth underneath your feet, or at least to feel the floor. You may like to place your hands flat on your legs, or not flat. I, you know what? It really doesn't matter. We are not chasing perfection. We're definitely not chasing the perfect meditation position. That's just false. We're not chasing the perfect meditation. There's no such thing. This is this is a, a, a radical embrace of our wonderful imperfection. So you know what? Have an imperfect meditation position. There you go. I've never said that before, but that just came out. And it's just a position that feels right for you and comfortable. And when you're ready, if, if it feels comfortable, you can just allow your eyes to gently close. And the simple single instruction for the next 10 minutes or so is 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 to do nothing. It's the sim it sounds simple. What we discover is that can be the the hardest thing of all just to try and do nothing. But that's that's really the intention here. That's that's the invitation here is to is to do nothing and just let yourself have your experience. This ordinary experience, sitting on a chair, breathing, wearing the clothes you're wearing, in the position you're in, feeling what you're feeling, hearing what you're hearing, just you as you are. We're not trying to get anywhere during this meditation. We're not trying to have any particular experience. We're not trying to chase some special experience. There's no goal in this ocean of meditation. Not even the goal of relaxation. Sometimes the mind even makes that into a goal. I need to get there. I need to get to this other place called relaxation. But even that creates tension, struggle, striving, anxiety. So we haven't even got that as a goal here. So just inviting your attention into this moment, just letting all the, the noise, the busyness, the activity of the day, fade into the background. Just inviting your attention into this present moment of your life, this, this moment that has never been experienced before, this utterly unique moment will never be experienced again. What's it like to be you here and now? 
This isn't a question that we answer with thinking. It's not a question we answer with the mind. It's an invitation to bring your attention home into the present moment, the place you always are. The past is a memory appearing in the present moment. The future is a, a dream, an image, a picture appearing in the present moment. So all of you is here in the present moment. So the invitation is to be here as fully as you can. And it's always a beginning. You can begin by just feeling your feet in contact with the ground. You could notice the places where your body touches the chair or the surface that you're that you're on. Just noticing those sensations of contact. Just feeling the weight of your body. Letting your body be heavy now. Letting your arms be heavy, letting your legs be heavy. Just giving your body full permission to be as heavy as it wants to be, as it needs to be, just feeling that pull of gravity, just giving your body up to gravity. Let your body fall into the pull of gravity. Just dropping your shoulders a little bit. Dropping your jaw a little bit. unfurrowing your brow a little bit. Just opening your palms slightly. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just giving ourselves permission to rest where we are, giving our nervous systems that, that great gift of resting where we are. And if during this meditation you, you notice yourself becoming distracted, it's perfectly okay. If you notice your attention flying off somewhere else, it's perfectly okay. If you notice your attention going off into past, into future, into rumination, ruminating over something that happened today or yesterday or last week, something that may or may not happen in the future, it's perfectly okay. You can just, just notice. It's all about noticing. It's all about the awareness. Just notice that your attention wandered off. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to punish yourself. It's just something that happens in meditation. And you could just gently bring yourself back here to this moment. Just gently... Bring yourself back home. Feel your feet on the ground again. You could become aware of your breathing. Your breathing is such a wonderful anchor to the present moment. Just become aware right now of those rising and falling sensations in the belly, in the chest. Just notice how the breath rises and falls all by itself, even when you're not aware of it. Just noticing those rising and falling sensations. Where do you feel those the most? Where do you feel those the most strongly? 
in the body. Those rising and falling sensations. Just notice if there's any sense of holding the breath or trying to control the breath and just invite that to soften. Just let the body breathe by itself. Nothing you have to do, nothing you have to understand. The body knows how to breathe. It's been doing this your whole life. Even when you're not aware of the breath, which is probably a lot of the time, even in deep, dreamless sleep every night, you're not even there to know it. This, these rising and falling sensations in the belly, they just keep going. It's life is the mystery, the intelligence of life itself, breathing you, breathing all of us right now. That, whatever is breathing you right now, that, that mystery, that infinite primal intelligence, that same mystery is breathing me, breathing everyone in this call, breathing everyone, every living, breathing being on the planet. So let's just be present for a few moments together with, with the rising and falling of the breath, the great mystery, each breath so deeply rooted in the present moment. It's the only place where breathing happens. Just being present as that wave of breath rises and falls in the ocean of you. And if you become distracted, again, that's fine. Just notice, oh, I've become distracted. Oh, wow, look where my attention flew off to. It's just a, it's a habit. The important thing is that you just notice that without judgment, without punishing yourself. It doesn't mean you're a bad meditator. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or you're doing it wrong. It's just an invitation to notice. Oh, look, I became distracted. Isn't that curious? Isn't that interesting? And you can just bring yourself back to this brand new breath. It's the beauty of the breath. It's always brand new. In some sense, it's always your first breath. So just using the breath as an anchor. Just gently noticing right now what, what your mind is doing. Is your mind busy? Is it noisy? Is your mind screaming? Are there, does it feel like there's a thousand thoughts buzzing around? Or maybe right now your mind is quiet, and that's, that's okay. It's okay to have a quiet mind. It's okay to have a noisy mind. This is the secret of meditation. We're not trying to control the mind. We're not trying to silence the mind. We're not trying to create a silent mind. These are all just ideas. Just the invitation here is just to do nothing with the mind. Just to notice all of those thoughts coming and going, voices in the head. Maybe they come as images memories, pictures. You could just see all these all this mental activity is just so many waves coming and going in a vast ocean 
So in meditation, we're invited to remember. Meditation is a remembering. It's not doing, it's a remembering. Remembering who we truly are. It's this ocean of being, this ocean of presence, this ocean of awareness. It goes by a million names, but ultimately it's nameless. It's what, it's what you are, it's what we all are. So as the ocean, you can just allow these, these waves to come and go, waves of thought, moment by moment. Not trying to stop thoughts, not trying to silence thoughts, not trying to get rid of thoughts, not trying to push away thoughts, not trying to transcend thoughts. We're not doing anything with these thoughts. Just being the ocean, the ocean in which all of these thoughts, all of these waves are allowed to appear, stay for a while, disappear. We're just not interfering with the mind, a noisy mind, a quiet mind. Who you are is is bigger than the mind. You are this vast ocean of awareness in which all these thoughts come and go moment by moment. So the ocean doesn't have to control the waves. That's its power. Your power doesn't lie in controlling thoughts or silencing thoughts. It's remembering who you are in the midst of thoughts. So just being present for a few moments, just letting thoughts come and go, even those really loud thoughts, those intense thoughts, those dark thoughts, light thoughts. All just waves coming and going. They don't define you. They can't control you. Just letting go of control, trying to control thoughts, so exhausting. And finally, let's just drop into the body together, just sending your awareness into your body, just dropping down into your body and just being very curious. What's, what's happening in your body right now? What's alive in you right now? What, what do you notice? Maybe your body feels peaceful right now. Maybe there's a sense of tiredness. Maybe there's a sense of peace. Or maybe there's a sense of restlessness, agitation. Maybe there's a sense of grief. Maybe boredom. Or maybe you just feel numb. Maybe there's a sense of exhaustion. Or maybe what's here right now is a, just a sense of joy, excitement. So what's, what's there in your experience? We're just coming closer to our experience without comparing it with anyone else's experience, without trying to fix it or change it or make it go away or transform it. And the invitation in this ocean of meditation is, can we just allow, can we allow what's here? Can we open to our experience, even if it's uncomfortable? Just give ourselves permission to, to have the experience we're having.
And maybe, maybe you notice a part of you that, that wants to run away. Maybe you notice a part of you that doesn't want this experience. So meditation is also about telling the truth. It's just, healing can really begin when we just tell the truth of our experience. We stop lying to ourselves. So maybe you notice a part of you that wants to run away, that doesn't want to be having this experience, that wants wants to have a different experience. Maybe there's a part of you that right now in this moment doesn't want to be in this moment. Maybe you want to be somewhere else. Maybe there's a part of you that wants to be in another moment, wants to be somewhere else wants to be with someone else, a part of you that wants to leave your experience, maybe go get a drink, a cigarette, chocolate, sex, shopping, Netflix. And again, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with any of this is it's just about noticing is is there a part of you that wants to run away all the different ways in which we run away maybe in your experience right now you're noticing some resistance or or non acceptance so can we even open to that experience, the experience of resistance, non-acceptance, non-allowing. We could even become curious about our resistance. Let's not make our resistance into something bad. And we end up resisting our resistance. Just You could get really curious about any resistance that you're feeling right now. Where, where do you feel it in your body? It's always a great question to ask. Where do I feel it in my body? Is it in my belly, my chest, my throat, my head? There's a, there's a part of your body right now, something in your experience that feels feels uncomfortable, feels intense, feels tight, feels achy. Part of you that feels painful. You could feel or imagine yourself breathing into that area. So you're sending breath, you're sending oxygen into that area, into that pain, into that loneliness, into that ache, into that tightness, into that resistance. Not trying to get rid of it. Maybe that's just a, a part of you. Maybe that painful place, that aching place, that place that feels tight, that place that feels tense place that feels contracted or bound up or wound up. Maybe that's just a part of you longing for, for love, longing for, for oxygen, longing for breath, longing for some kindness. Maybe it's just a part of you calling for help. So instead of seeing that place within you as something bad or something wrong, or something evil, or something unspiritual, or something that, that needs to be deleted or fixed. Maybe you could begin to see that part of you as just a place yearning, longing, starving for, for love. And just see what happens when you just allow, just opening to our experience exactly as it is. If you're exhausted, 
see what happens when you just become curious about that exhaustion. Allow you, give yourself permission to feel that exhaustion instead of running away from it or trying to fix it. To see what happens. Just letting your experience be exactly as it is. Letting your experience be exactly as it is, including any resistance to your experience. Even resistance is welcome here in this meditation. This is a, a vast ocean in which all of us is welcome. All of our waves, our boredom, our excitement, our loneliness, our joy, our grief. It's all welcome in this ocean. It's an ocean of unconditional love, which is ultimately what we are. And you can let go of this meditation. You can, you can even let go of trying to meditate, trying to be present, trying to relax, trying to feel better, trying to have a shift. Sometimes unconsciously we're waiting for some kind of shift. It's the mind. You can let go of trying to get it right, trying to have the right experience, trying to have the perfect experience, trying to have a better experience. It's all so exhausting. It's all just seeking goals, futures. So you can just let go of the meditation. Just, just let yourself rest. Just give yourself permission to rest from this exhausting self-improvement project just resting on the chair wherever you are you just sink a few more millimeters into the chair the sofa the bed wherever you are just let yourself be held by the chair by the ground by the earth held exactly as you are, tired, energized, restful, restless, it doesn't matter. You can rest in the midst of it all. The rest comes from stopping fighting it, or trying to become something else. The rest is in the presence. The rest is in the presence, which is what you are. So let's just give ourselves now a few moments of the sacred gift of rest. Just let our nervous systems really drink in this, this presence. Just let yourself rest. Let the, the earth hold you the forests, the mountains, the oceans, just held by the earth itself, by the, the sky, the planets, the solar system, the universe, just holding you exactly as you are, letting you rest in its embrace. And if during this meditation you've touched within yourself 
within your body a, a place that feels safe that feels peaceful that feels present that feels expansive that feels relaxed see if you can keep some of your awareness rooted in that place see if you can stay connected to that place within you as you slowly begin to open your eyes and come back into the room the space wherever you are and you can have a little stretch if you would like to Well, welcome back. Welcome back. It's a funny thing to say, isn't it? We didn't go anywhere. We just dropped into presence, which is here. We were more here. Welcome back here. <laughs> I have a sense that quite a few of you dropped quite deeply into that meditation, into that into that ocean. Um, it's funny. Sometimes I think what happens in meditation is that the um one of the most important things that happens in meditation is that we just stop comparing ourselves we come out of that mode of comparing ourselves with anyone or anything else you know we stop comparing ourselves with with the image some second hand image some conditioned learned image of how we should be um what experience we should be having just the, the the image of perfection it's like in meditation all those images start to burn up everything second hand everything false and there's a there's a leaning back in there's a resting in our authentic first hand intimate first hand embodied experience we just simply stop comparing of course we may notice ourselves in meditation. We may notice the comparing coming back. You know, we can very quickly go into our heads, can't we? I'm, I'm sure many of you, you know, during that meditation, noticed yourself becoming distracted, going into your head. And it's again, it's it's perfectly okay. Um, so, sometimes when people meditate, they 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 think that getting distracted is bad. Well, that's wrong. That's what they shouldn't do. But then, of course, what happens is that you end up making distraction into the enemy. And in true meditation, there are there are no enemies. It's 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 an it's an, you know an unconditionally loving ocean. So, um, the goal is not to never get distracted. That's not the goal. As I always say, if if you if you become distracted, it's perfectly okay. I'm sure many of you became distracted during that meditation. So you just notice. Okay, I've become distracted, and I and I just lovingly bring myself back. Start again. Start again. That's that's why, you know, the the everyone is a beginner when it comes to meditation. We're a bit, we're all beginning again in every moment, beginning again. Um. So, anyway, so yeah, let let me know how that meditation was for you, and also if you have any questions, we have a little bit of time left. I said I would take questions. I'm not sure how many questions I'm going to be able to take, but um. Yeah, please uh, drop a maybe just a sh short and simple. If you could keep the question short and simple, um, I was going to say something quickly about letting go. Um, I was just thinking about that today. This, this like, so so many spiritual people that I meet, they're they're kind of obsessed with this letting go. Everyone's trying to let go. You have to let go of your anger, let go of your resentment, let go of your fear, let go of your anger. You know, or, or or they talk about releasing. You have to you have to release your anger, release your fear, release this, release that. Um, the thing is, when you really look, when you really dive into this loving ocean of meditation, you'll start to understand that it's just nonsense. Letting go, releasing. The ocean can't let go of one of its waves. The ocean can't release one of its waves. I think often when. Now, when 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 someone says, "Oh, I'm trying to release my anger," or "I'm trying to release my fear," what they really mean is, "I don't want 
this fear inside of me. I want to get rid of it. I want to let go of it. I want to release it. But what you really start to understand when, when you really dive into, into meditation is that actually, paradoxically, um, you can't let go. You can't let go of, of a wave. You can't let go of fear. Um, what you can do, and this is why it's so meditation is so paradoxical, um, it's like instead of let, trying to let go of fear, you let yourself, you let, you let go of letting go. It's just another concept. Oh, I have to let go of this. And it becomes so exhausting trying to let go. Or, or some people try and let go of thoughts. And of course, the more you try and, the more you try and let go of thoughts, the more you try and silence thoughts, the more you try and delete thoughts, the louder they get. It's very paradoxical. So my invitation, the invitation of meditation is to go the other way. Instead of trying to let go, let go of letting go and let yourself go into your experience. Let yourself go into the fear. Let, let, let love, let your love go into your experience. Let your presence go into your experience. Infuse that fear with with love with kindness with with compassion with with allowing with with breath if you can begin to see you know that that thing that's troubling you fear or anger or sadness or or, or doubt or whatever it is if you can begin to see it as a little child within you longing for love longing for help then you'll start to realize how how unloving it is to actually to think about letting go of it it's like you wouldn't say to you wouldn't say to a child, you know, if 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 a little child came up to you and they were afraid and they were like, I'm really afraid. You wouldn't say to the child, Oh, I need to let go of you. You wouldn't say that. You can start to feel how unloving that is. You would you would you would be present with that child. You would you might hold them. You know, you would validate their experience. You wouldn't try and let go of them. You would let yourself go into their experience. And then paradoxically, and, and, and maybe some of you have discovered this yourself, in um, actually allowing your experience, giving yourself the permission to go through your experience, instead of getting out of it, go, go through it, what you may start to find is that, that that pain, that grief, that sorrow, that fear, held in love, held in presence, held in acceptance, it actually begins to let go of you. You you don't let go of it. It begins to let go of you through love, through through presence, through through um through allowing. Um anyway, I just thought I'd mention that because I had a couple of emails about that recently. And and um yeah, to let go of letting go. Also, also, um, also, the idea of surrender. You know, surrender is not something that you can do. I think the ego, the ego, the mind gets hold of. Oh, I'm going to do the letting go. I'm going to do the releasing. I'm going to do the surrender. It's not something you can do. It's not something that you can do. So we could even surrender in meditation. We're invited to even surrender all our ideas about surrender. Um, and anyway, I'm going to go more into that in, in, in the online course. Um, yeah, the, uh, the alchemy of surrender that's, uh, starts, uh, next week. I would love, I would love for you to join. Um, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, let me, let me read out a couple of questions and comments. Uh, Tine says throwback. <laughs> I, should, uh, I think you're talking about one of my retreats a few years ago. So good to not let go. Yeah. Um, Deborah says, Jeff and all, I enjoyed the meditation. Thanks for the invitation to go into the experience with love and compassion. Cool concept to ride the waves of joy, anger, fear, and let go of letting go and just be present, validate and go into events. Yeah. You know, you have so, so much more courage than you realize. It takes, it really takes so much courage to do this work, courage to go into your experience. That's that's true courage, you know, stepping into the unknown because that's what meditation is. It's we're, we're, we are literally taking a step into the unknown, into the mystery. We're putting aside all our concepts, images of how we should be, 
everything's everything false, everything's secondhand. And we're we're taking that brave, that courageous step into the unknown. I think meditation is a very courageous act. Um, that's why I'm all, I'm 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 always amazed, you know, when I offer these sessions that so many people want to sign up because I think, you know, this is it's not it's not easy what we're doing here. It's not, you know, in a world that's kind of encouraging you to run as fast as possible, in a world where there's like a million distractions. Right now, there's a million things you could be doing instead of you know, instead of a, a webinar on slowing down, you know. But for some reason, life brought you here you know it just shows that there's there's already something within you that is that is awakening to this um otherwise you just would not be interested in slowing down you know it's um anyway i was going to do a a question um anyone got a question oh uh well it's a question yeah so grace yes the the course is um uh wednesdays for 6 weeks uh 11 a.m. pacific time um 7 p.m. London time, but all all the sessions, if you can't attend live, all the sessions are recorded for you, um, so you don't you don't have to do the sessions live. Um, Larissa says, "Wow, there's fail falling and lots of tears, lots of beautiful. You know, this is this is why true meditation is it's a dive into the unknown. You know, when you really slow down, the way we do here, when you really just stop the way we just did." You really don't know, and maybe that's why it's a bit scary, and maybe it should be a bit scary, a bit edgy, you know? You really don't know what's going to come up for you. Meditation's the end of control, isn't it? You don't, may, Maybe suddenly in meditation, out of nowhere, a wave of grief. Wow, where did that come from? I mean, how many times have I had that experience in meditation? And may, may, maybe you have too. I, or maybe just in the middle of meditation, you're just kind of noticing your breath, you're feeling your feet, you're, and then suddenly out of, seemingly out of nowhere, just a wave of rage. Wow, so much life. Or a wave of, a wave of fear. Life, life, life. This is, that doesn't mean the meditation has gone wrong. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's just like life. It's like, wow, this is, this is like the sense of meditation. It's like, wow, look at all this life in me. Look at all these waves that's, that's why i love this metaphor of the waves and the ocean because the ocean never says oh my god i shouldn't have that wave the ocean never says oh my god what's wrong with me why that wave it's like the ocean and this is just a metaphor but it's like the ocean knows all of these waves belong in me even the intense ones the uncomfortable ones the anger the fear the, the grief the joy there is enough room in my being there's enough room there's enough capacity for all of this life and this is what i i, I guess awakening spiritual awakening is really all about it's it's not about attaining you know some state it's not about becoming this other becoming this awakened person all that all of that is just the mind's concepts it's a <laughs> It's all about remembering who you really are. It's something very simple, really. It's all about remembering how much space there is in your being, how much capacity you have. There's so much room in you. There's room for the doubt. There's room for the fear. There's room for the anger. These are not enemies. These are not signs that you're unawakened. These are not signs that, that you're broken. There's something wrong with you. These are waves. Then they just want they just want to move through. They just want to move through. So yeah, yeah, Larissa. Um, sometimes tears just come, and sometimes it's just beautiful to allow those tears to come and to not know, not know where, why, or where they're from, but just to give ourselves permission. It's I love this word permission. I love this word permission. It's all about that permission. Give ourselves permission to cry sometimes. Give ourselves permission to feel down. Give ourselves permission to feel heartbroken. Give ourselves permission. Some of us need permission to feel joy. Um, Vata says, that was lovely, Jeff. It took me back to being with Osho in India all those years ago, to living in constant presence. Beautiful. Joanne says, thank you, Jeff, for showing me how to simple, natural, ordinary, and extraordinary it can be to just sit. Beautiful. 
that is a lovely comment. How simple, natural, ordinary, and ex and extraordinary it can be to just sit. Yeah, I think I think that's why I called this session the miracle of slowing down because it's um well it it doesn't it, sometimes it doesn't seem like a miracle. Um, it's like the mind might go, but what? It's just but it's just just sitting, doing nothing. It's that's so that's so ordinary. It's like nothing. That's so boring. How's that a miracle? Well, that that's what we begin to discover. It's the 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 extraordinary is not out there somewhere. It's it's not about chasing extraordinary states. States, even the most spiritual, highest spiritual state, a lot of people are chasing those things, but they they're temporary. They're part of the world of impermanence. They come and go. It's like chasing the next high. It becomes addictive, you know. In this, what we're doing here is we're really smashing, breaking, deconstructing all our addictions. That that's really what this is all about. And everyone has their their own addictions, you know. Um, and what's at the core? What's at the core of all addiction? It's like chasing another moment, isn't it? Really, it's the core of all addiction. It's one way of talking about addiction. It's it's like always chasing the next thing, the next high, some other moment, some better moment. Addiction, all addiction on some level is addiction to future. You know, it's like we wanna, I want that thing over there. Why? Because I don't, I don't want, I don't want this. And that's what I realized years ago was all my chasing, all my spiritual addiction, trying to become enlightened. Really, what it all was ultimately it was just running me running away from myself. That was very humbling when I realized that. Just running, running. And where was I running to? Where was I gonna get? <laughs> if you're running away from yourself, where the hell are you gonna get to? What well, what's the destination? So at some point I realized um I had to go this way. I had to fall in love with this wonderful, imperfect broken, whole, sensitive, fragile human. And and that's where I found the, the true spirituality, I, I would say. Um, Lisa says, thank you, Jeff. I noticed that my judgmental, critical mind is really my longing for love. Wow. Wow, Lisa. Wow. You say this, this was really, this was powerful for me. Wow. I noticed that my judgmental and critical mind is really my longing for love. Wow, I've actually never heard it said like that, Lisa. That is powerful. You know, so I, sometimes I feel I'm I'm not really a teacher. I'm 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 I learn so much from just from life and from all of you, you know. I'm going to read that again. That that is powerful. I noticed that my judgmental and critical mind is really my longing for love. Wow. That's like a Zen koan, isn't it? Beautiful. Um, Hayat, Hayat, Hayat. Sorry, I'm not very good at pronouncing names. Yes, gave myself a hug as I released my grief. Beautiful. Grief is all about. Um, I was just talking about this yesterday in my um members um my live members group. Um, grief, grief is 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 really grieving is the way I I, I think that our nervous systems release trauma, release the past. Grie grieving is how we return to the ground. Sometimes we just have to grieve out. We have to grieve out the past. We have to grieve out the old dreams, the old, the old hopes, the old promises. Grieving is a process of letting go, isn't it? But we can't, that's what I'm saying. You know, we, we can't do the letting go. You can't jump to the letting go. You have to go through the moments. You have to let yourself grieve, give yourself permission to grieve and through the grieving. There is a natural returning to returning to the ground. It's not so. It's not something that you do. It's kind of done to you, right? Isn't it? Um, bunny, bunny. That's a lovely name. The ocean metaphor is lovely and very helpful. Thank you. I don't think I don't think I came up with it. Um, it's a great metaphor, isn't it? Um, Love meditating with you, Jeff. Jill says it resonates with me and able to rest and experience more. Um, Chris, 
Dina says there was a second of slowing down and stop everything, and both were possible, dying or living again. Beautiful. Even, you know, even just a second of slowing down is is a miracle. Isn't it funny, right? The, the mind can turn everything into a goal. So bless the mind. So it can even turn stillness or slowing down or rest into a goal. And then that becomes the new project. I'm I'm gonna get to that place called rest. I'm gonna get to that place called stillness. I'm gonna get to that place called slowing down. And I'm gonna be the best at slowing down. I'm gonna be the best at rest. That's a great title for something, isn't it? I'm gonna be the most restful. I'm gonna be in rest so deeply, 24 hours a day. And that's just what the mind does. It creates these impossible goals and you're just setting yourself up for failure. Because the truth is, it's not about being, it's not even, even about being in a permanent state of rest. There's gonna be some moments where you, you connect with presence and rest. And there's gonna be some moments where you find yourself distracted. And that's okay. You can actually, and maybe this is for another session, but you can actually rest with that. You can actually rest in the midst of distraction. I know that sounds incredibly paradoxical, but because the point is rest isn't actually something that you do. Rest is presence itself. So you can actually be present. You can be present and, oh, look, oh, look, I became distracted. But there, there can be a resting with that. Rest is not a goal. Anyway, the way that we, we haven't got time to go, to go into that. Um, um, Patty says, I heard that grief is love with no place to go. Wow, that's really powerful as well. I'm going to read that again. Grief is love. Grief is love with no place to go. Yeah, love that wants to attach to an object, but that object is gone. That old anchor is gone. That's really beautiful. That's very powerful as well. Um, yeah, uh, Fanny says, the mind is always looking for a better experience. But even that, oh, no, my phone just, that was strange. Isn't that funny? Just as I was reading that. Oh, it's back. <laughs> the mind is always looking for a better experience, but even that is part of the whole. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Even the seeking even the mind looking for something is not bad. It's not wrong. That Even that's an expression of the ocean. I remember years ago when I was a very serious spiritual seeker, desperately seeking enlightenment, I used to think that the mind was the enemy or the mind was something that I had to destroy. I had to go beyond it. I had to stop it. I had to quiet it. All these ideas, you know, or the... Um, you know that I that I shouldn't have desires. That's that's one of those funny spiritual ideas as well. But of course, desire, longing, desire, seeking. These are all just more waves arising in the ocean. So so they're not they're not wrong. Um, they're just they're expressions expressions of the whole. The mind, yeah, William, beautiful. The mind. I'm learning so much from you guys today. The mind cannot quiet the mind. That is so true. The mind cannot quiet the mind. I remember um, U.G. Krishnamurti, he was a uh, spiritual, te well, he was kind of an anti-spiritual teacher. Um, I used to listen to him many years ago, and he said something once that shook me to my core. He said, and um, well, now I can't remember it. Oh, dear. Um, he said, the mind, the mind is not the instrument. And and he was talking about you know when it when it comes to peace when it comes to presence when it comes to knowing who we really are when it when it comes to awakening, he said the mind is not the instrument the mind is not the instrument that that, that can get you there. He said the mind is not the instrument. And then he said and this is the thing that sh shook me to my core. He said the mind is not the instrument, and there is no other instrument. It was like a Zen. It was like another one of these Zen koans. It just kind of stops you in your tracks. The mind can't get you there, and there is no other instrument to get you there. And from one perspective, that sounds like terrible news. Well, then how the hell do I get there? But that is the invitation to begin. Oh, 
There's no there. That's all a fantasy. There's just here. It's an invitation to fall in love with here. And the mind can't get you there. The mind can't get you here. The mind, the mind comes and goes. Thought, thought comes and goes in, in presence. But I just thought that was a lovely way of saying it. The mind is not the instrument, and there is no other instrument. Um, Alan says, ocean wave or low tide love playing in the waves and that permission to play the permission to play to be play to open the present of rest and be the present and be the rest love the meditation of wordplay returning to activity from rest this is so much fun thank you <laughs> thank you alan it is fun isn't it it's like the ocean the ocean is always at rest there's beautiful infinite depths of the metaphorical ocean, the infinite depth, the infinite depths of the ocean. It's the ocean at its depths is is always at rest, and that's what you are. But the ocean it plays, it plays with all these these waves, waves of fear and anger and joy and grief and doubt and certainty. It's all this activity. We don't have to. Um, just coming back to the title of this webinar, because we should probably draw this to a close now, otherwise we'll go on all night, which might be fun one of these days to do an all night, all day, all night, all night session. The miracle of slowing down, meeting our noisy minds and tired bodies with kindness and compassion. So our, uh, one of the things I hope that you got from this session today is that um, we don't need to fight the noisy mind, and we don't need to fight or judge or punish or shame the tired body that, that we can actually open open with kindness and compassion and understanding to these waves these beautiful waves of experience that the noisy mind the tired body and it's not about how can i stop my noisy mind and how can i stop my tired body maybe are not the right questions maybe those questions are coming from the mind we can bring compassion to a noisy mind let the mind be noisy just just as an experiment for the next the rest of your day or the next few hours just let your mind be noisy if, if you're lying in bed in the middle of the night i was talking to my mum uh on the phone yesterday and she was like jeff sometimes i wake up in the middle of the night um and my, it feels like my mind is just so noisy and she said nothing i nothing i do works all the techniques and the tricks and the she said the only thing that works the only thing that works is is just letting the mind be noisy giving it full permission to be noisy because then you're not at war then you're not split just you know she said just remembering that i am the the presence the ocean behind all of those waves, the ocean that actually allows all of those waves. And that's when sleep can come. Without same thing, you can't make yourself go to sleep, can you? The, the more you try to sleep, the more awake you feel. It's all very paradoxical. Anyway, um, thank you so much, everyone. I should probably draw this to a close. I might finish with a poem. Um, wow, so many comments. Uh, my my mum is the OG. Yes, Anna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Alejandro says the thing is that we have invested so much in this that it's difficult to see it so simple. Very true. We have invested so much. Roxana, yeah, reminds me of we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking that we use when we created them. Albert Einstein said that. Um, yeah, not being at war, not being at war. Thank you so much, Margaret says. I haven't felt that kind of peace in a long, long time. Beautiful. I'm going to finish with one of my favorite poems. I think this is just, I just love this poem so much. Um, but before, I'll, before I read it, I just would like to say thank you, everybody. Um, thank you so much for, for, for showing up. Um, Thank you so much for slowing down with me, for for listening, for your for your beautiful comments, for your questions. Uh, thank you for your courage to take a step into the unknown, which is what meditation really is. Um, yeah, I hope to see some of you in my in my um, my six week course. We start on Wednesday. I think the link is in the chat somewhere, or you should 
get an email about it. Um, yeah, be lovely to see you there. Um, let me finish with this beautiful poem about the the deepest longing of the heart. Um, that 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 longing, that yearning for for stillness, for peace. Uh, yeah, for the silence of the silence of the heart. This is it's called the Lake Isle of Innisfree by William Butler Yeats. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree, and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There, midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, an evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. It's the Lake Isle of Innisfree by William Butler Yeats, our friend, Mr. Yeats. Oh, and someone dropped the link there. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for your listening, your support, your love. I hope this session was helpful, beneficial to you somehow. I hope you um, were able to slow down just, just a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, I hopefully we'll do one of these free live sessions again soon. Um, that's it. That's it. Lots of love to you all and take care. And I hope to see you all very soon. Lots of love.